Today's lesson is called Enchanting Vietnam. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff, and I'm Roger. Today, we're going to continue with our journey to enchanting Vietnam. Okay, so last time, of course, we talked about our tour of the capital city Hanoi, and we went to the Imperial Citadel. We also went to the Temple of Literature, and let's see what else did we do? We went to the Ho Chi Minh Mausoleum, and then we went to the lively old quarter. There you go, and yes, wherever we went, okay, one thing remained true: Vietnam is awesome. Vietnam is enchanting. By the way, we're using this word "enchanting" in the title as an adjective. You can also enchant someone, okay? If you enchant someone, you put them under a spell, as if by magic or something like that. But here, we're not saying, "Hey, we're going to go down the street and we're going to do some enchanting. We're going to be enchanting Vietnam, putting Vietnam under a spell." No. We're not doing anything like that. We're saying that Vietnam is a great place, and it most certainly is a great place. Here's a fun fact: the late Anthony Bourdain, a famous chef who had a great show where he traveled all over the world, even here to Taiwan, to sample food and to、uh, absorb foreign cultures. One of his favorite places on planet Earth was Vietnam. In fact, it might have been on the top of that list. It's too bad we can't ask him to clarify that for us anymore. More. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. When we come back, we'll start reading from the second portion of our lesson on enchanting Vietnam. Around 170 kilometers east of Hanoi is Ha Long Bay, dotted with countless limestone islands. Some of the isles hide grottoes such as Sung Sot Cave on Bo Han Island. The cavern, which can hold thousands of people at once, Likely got its name, which means surprise, from visitors' reactions upon seeing its size. Everyone, the first part, we saw a verb, be dotted with, a noun, meaning to be dotted with, 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 除了警察总局，还有许多规模较小的警局遍布在市区各处。又或者说 ，this region of the mountain is dotted with thousands of trees. 这座山的这个区域布满着数以千计的树木。再来，我们看到的单字是名词 cavern， 指巨大的洞穴、山洞、地洞。像是 Ken and I had an amazing time exploring and photographing the caverns of South Dakota. Ken 和我在探索和拍摄南达科达州的大洞穴时，非常开心。Okay, so we're done with our tour of Hanoi, the capital city, and now we're getting out of Hanoi and traveling to places kind of nearby in the countryside. Well, around 170 kilometers east of Hanoi is Halong Bay. Dotted with countless limestone islands, you've probably seen pictures of Ha Long Bay. It's one of their most popular tourist destinations. Of course, it's、uh, next to the ocean there. That's why it's called a bay there. And it's got all these limestone islands, islands made out of limestone, which is a kind of sedimentary rock. It's、uh, hard, and of course, Ha Long Bay has lots of these islands all over the place. So it's very picturesque. It is dotted with those islands, like dots, all over the place. You see one island here, one island there. They're all over the place. So there you go. You've got this beautiful bay, and in this bay, you have all of these islands, countless islands, many, many islands. This bay is dotted with these islands. I.e., these islands are kind of spread about this bay or in this bay in an irregular way, not unlike dots. On that bay, they kind of pop out of the bay here and there, not unlike dots. These islands do. Anyways, more on these islands, these countless limestone islands. Some of the isles hide grottoes, such as Sung Sot Cave on Bohan Island.、Mm, sounds good. After all, I am a big fan of hidden grottoes. Anyways, before we move on, let's talk about a vocabulary word. The word 
aisle. The word aisle is short for the word island. Yes, usually an aisle is a small island or maybe a small peninsula. But here we're talking about these limestone islands. There are countless limestone islands here in this bay. And some of these islands, some of these aisles, they hide these grottoes. Right. And we should mention that the word aisle here is most often used in literature or in poetry. I wouldn't say, for example, I'm taking a trip out to Guishan Isle. Now, we'd call that Guishan an island. We're just using this word isle here because Vietnam is such an enchanting place and these islands are really something out of a fairy tale if you look at them. So some of these isles here hide these grottoes. A grotto, of course, is a cave, but a very interesting cave. And we, of course, have some examples of those caves as we've listed here. Now, the cavern, which can hold thousands of people at once, likely got its name which means surprise from visitors' reactions upon seeing its size. So here, of course, we're talking about Song Sot Cave. We're also describing it as a cavern. A cavern is another word for a cave, or at least a large open area inside of a cave. So this cavern is quite huge. It's quite large. Lots of people can go in there. Thousands of people can go in there at once. And of course, when people go in there, they go, "Wow, this is so surprising! I did not expect that." Well, that's what the name means in Vietnamese: surprise. Wow, that does sound really awesome to me. This cavern, by the way, yes, caverns and caves. They do seem somewhat similar, and I'm looking at this for the first time and noticing this for the first time. The first four letters in the word cavern are C A V E. Cave. How about that? What for, a coincidence! What a coincidence! How about that for being related? Now, one small note back to the word "isle." We said that was short for the word "island." Now, that sounds a whole lot like the word "isle," a i s l e, but the two things are totally different. They're not connected the way that caverns and caves are. If you go to a store, an aisle is a place where you're going to do your shopping. It's going to be a set of shelves where you can buy stuff in that grocery store or maybe in a bookstore as well. For instance, if you went to a bookstore, you might say, "Excuse me, can you tell me where to find the mystery books?" And they might say, "Oh, the aisle with mystery books is right over there." Okay, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. South of Halong Bay is the city of Hue, located on the banks of the Perfume River, and once the seat of the Wen Dynasty. Scattered here are the tombs of ancient emperors, of which perhaps the most beautiful is the Min Mang Tomb, whose complex includes palaces and temples that stand in perfect harmony with the natural surroundings. The 17th-century Tian Mu Pagoda, with its seven-story tower, is also worth visiting, as it's considered one of Hue's most important symbols. Someone on the train was wearing so much perfume that I could hardly breathe. The smell of jasmine from the tree perfumed the room when the window was open. 窗户打开时，窗外的茉莉花使房间内充满香气。接着，我们看到名词harmony有和谐融洽之意，像是 Claire's living room combines several styles in a way that creates harmony. Claire的客厅结合了很多种风格，但创造出和谐感。这边补充harmony相关的片语，常常使用 in harmony with something来表示与点点点协调。举例来说, surprisingly, the dogs in my neighborhood live in harmony with the cats. 令人惊讶的, 我家附近的狗和猫竟能和平相处. 接着是单字, surroundings. 这个字是名词指, 环境, 很用复数型. 例如, the new city's unfamiliar surroundings gave me a profound sense of homesickness. 这座新城市不熟悉的环境, 让我犯了浓浓的思乡病. 而这个字去除字尾的 s surrounding 作为形容词，指周围的或周遭的，像是 Grand Central Terminal and the surrounding area is a well-known tourist attraction in New York. 
，中央车站及它周遭的区域是纽约著名的观光景点。另外，补充与 surroundings 相关的单字 surround。S U R R O U N D surround 为动词，有围绕、包围之意。我们可以说 ，There is considerable controversy surrounding the election. 有很多争议话题围绕着这次的选举。Okay, so we've just gone to Halong Bay, and we've seen some of those grottos there. Well, south of Halong Bay is the city of Hue. Located on the banks of the Perfume River, and once the seat of the Win Dynasty. So, of course, we're leaving Halong Bay and we're heading south to the city of Hue. Well, it's、uh, next to a river there. So, if we say a city is next to a river, we say it's located on the banks. Of a particular river, bank here, of course, does not refer to a place where you put your money or where you borrow money. It's basically the side of a river. We only use it when we talk about rivers. If you're talking about a lake or the ocean, we say shore in those particular cases. But for a river, we say the river bank. So it's next to the river there, and the name of the river is the Perfume River. Wow, it must smell really nice. It, with a name like that, how could it smell? Otherwise, the perfume river, it must smell like perfume. And yes, perfume is a liquid or a substance that usually ladies put on their bodies to make them smell better. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, it says scattered here on the banks of the perfume river, scattered here are the tombs of ancient emperors, of which perhaps the most beautiful is the Minmong tomb, whose complex includes palaces and temples that stand in perfect harmony. With the natural surroundings. All right, let's go ahead and talk about some vocabulary right now. It says here that things stand in perfect harmony, but what is perfect harmony? What is harmony? Harmony is a whole lot like balance. Okay, if you have harmony, you have a situation where things. Come together, or coexist, or are brought together in a pleasing and beautiful way. Yes, harmony is a peaceful and pleasant state where people get along. Let's say, or in which things coexist nicely. Okay, there's no clashing at all if you've got a situation with harmony. Very often, you can find harmony in music if two people sing together and their voices go together in a way that makes both of them sound even better. You can say they are singing with. Harmony. Now, sometimes though, you have two people who are tone deaf and they have no idea how to sing, and when they sing together, it sounds terrible. That would not be harmony. That would be discord. Yes, the opposite of harmony is discord. Now, we also talk about surroundings here. Apparently, we've got palaces and temples that stand in perfect harmony with the natural surroundings there on the banks of the Perfume River. But what are surroundings? Surroundings are the thing. The circumstances or the conditions around you at some time. Yes, very simply, your surroundings are what you see, hear, smell, or otherwise sense. And when you're talking about a place, the idea is the same. If you talk about the surroundings of some place, you're talking about the things that are found in that area around that place. Indeed, just like we talked about earlier when we talked about looking at the surrounding area, this is, usage here is a little different. Here, this is a noun here referring to all the things that are around you. So, for example, if you leave your hometown and go to university in a new city, well, when you get there, you need to get used to your surroundings. You need to know all about where you're living, where things are, how to get around, and stuff like that. So, of course, yeah. Yes, those temples stand in perfect harmony with the natural surroundings. There are no eyesores there. Sometimes people build ugly houses in the mountains. Oh, that's such an eyesore! It does not blend in with the surroundings. There is no harmony with the natural surroundings. But here in Vietnam, they've done their homework. These buildings. 
set in perfectly with the surroundings. They are in perfect harmony. Now let's、uh, go on here to the next sentence. It says the 17th century Tianmu Pagoda, with its seven-story tower, is also worth visiting. So here we've got a pagoda, which is usually a tall structure. You see them in cemeteries in Taiwan all the time. They always have odd number floors, three, five, seven, sometimes nine. So in Vietnam, of course, you've got this pagoda that's really old. It's from the 17th century, from the 1600s, and it's got a seven-story tower. And it's worth checking out. It's worth visiting. But I doubt they'll let you go inside it. We will now move on to the third part of our lesson. Let's listen. Traveling further south takes you to the peaceful city of Hui'an. There you can visit Mi San, the remains of tower temples from the Champa Kingdom, which flourished for over 1,000 years. Hui'an's Japanese-covered bridge and Chinese buildings also reveal the influence these cultures had on Vietnam. A mix of complex cultures and beautiful nature distinguishes Vietnam from its neighbors. Put it on your travel radar and experience something unique. 最后第三部分，我们看到动词 flourish 指兴盛、繁荣。例如 ，Teddy's business began out of his basement and quickly flourished into a large-scale corporation. Teddy 的事业始于地下室，并迅速发展成一家大规模的企业。另外 ，flourish 除了可以指兴盛繁荣，还可以指人的身体成长茁壮。所以可以说 ，Lexi has flourished ever since moving to Seattle. The city's cloudy skies and rainy days have done wonders for her health and wellness. Lexi 自从搬到西雅图后，身体就好转起来。多云的天空和雨天对她的健康发挥神奇效果。All right. Here in the third and final part of our lesson, it says, "Traveling further south takes you to the peaceful city of Hoi An, and there you can visit Mi Son, the remains of tower temples from the Champa Kingdom, which flourished for over a thousand years. So that's what you can visit there: the remains of these temples that were in the shape of towers. Remains just means what are left over of some ancient structure. This is from the Champa Kingdom, and it flourished. It was in power. It was at its height for a long time, for ten centuries, for over a thousand years. Flourish, yeah. This is one of my favorite words, by the way. Okay, to flourish is to grow and to thrive and to develop quickly and successfully. Okay, so if this kingdom flourished, it was on top of its game for over a thousand years. Not only did it survive, it was super successful. It thrived. Okay, that's what flourishing is all about. For instance, you could say, if this business venture pans out, not only will we be successful, we will flourish. I.e., if this works out for us, not only will we make money, we'll be rich. We'll make that much money. We'll flourish. Anyways, moving on. The next sentence says. Huai'an's Japanese-covered bridge and Chinese buildings also reveal the influence these cultures had on Vietnam. So we've talked about the、um, American War there in Vietnam, the Vietnam War. We talked about the French. Yes, remember Vietnam was a French colony for a while there. And apparently, there's also been Japanese and Chinese influences on Vietnam as well. And if you go to these places there in Way on, you'll be able to see the influence that these cultures had on Vietnam. Yep, there'll be a covered bridge there, which of course is covered like it's a house or something. That will be something to check out. Also, Chinese buildings. Indeed, these cultures influenced Vietnam greatly. Now let's、uh, move to the final paragraph. Here we're going to wrap things up. It says a mix of complex cultures and beautiful nature distinguishes Vietnam from its neighbors. 
That's why it's different from its neighbors. It's got great cultural things with ancient temples and things like that, but it also has great things to check out outside, like Halong Bay, for example, or the Perfume River. So that makes it different. It makes it stick out from its neighbors, like Thailand or Laos or whatever. So put it on your travel radar and experience something unique. My goodness, your travel radar isn't radar something that、uh, the army uses to look for enemy planes? That's what. Radar is yes, but you can also have travel radar. Okay, you can sense that next great place to travel to if you have travel radar. Anyways, it says here, put it on your travel radar and experience something unique. And yes, if something is unique, it's special. It's special and one of a kind, and unlike other things of a similar type. So there in Southeast Asia, sure you've got Cambodia and Laos. And Myanmar and Thailand, but Vietnam. Even though it is in Southeast Asia, it's unique. It's unlike these other places. Okay, so you're definitely going to want to put this on your next travel itinerary. Yes, if you're going to go to Southeast Asia, make sure you go to Vietnam. Enchanting Vietnam. All right, folks. With that, it is time for us to take a break. But don't go away. The Chinese teacher is waiting in the wings. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第二部分介绍了越南的顺化市，然后这个段落第二句说到 ，Scattered here are the tombs of ancient emperors, of which perhaps the most beautiful is the Ming Mong tomb, whose complex includes palaces and temples that stand in perfect harmony with the natural surroundings. 这里散布着古代帝王的陵寝。那其中最美丽的或许就是明命陵，它的宫殿和寺庙与自然环境和谐并存。好，这个句子又臭又长，我们一部分一部分来看哦。首先看到一开始的 scattered here are the tombs of ancient emperors， 这部分呢是把主词补语移到句首的倒装句。我们就先假装后面没有那两个关系子句哦。那其实你就可以把它还原成 the tombs of ancient emperors are。Scattered here, 古代帝王的陵寝散布在这里。好，那它的句型结构就是主词 the tombs of ancient emperors 加上 be 动词 are， 再加上主词补语 scattered here。好，当你的主词呢带有比较长的修饰语的时候，有可能会造成头重脚轻。这时候呢，你就可以把主词补语移到句首，然后再把 be 动词移到主词的前面，来形成倒装。倒装之后，句型结构就变成主词补语加 be 动词加主词。像我们课文里面的句子啊，它的主词后面就连续带了两句很长的关系子句。如果你不倒装的话呢，句子会变成 the tombs of ancient emperors of which blah 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 很长，然后逗号又 whose blah 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 很长。好，念完这两句又臭又长的关系子句，你就头又晕了。然后你才会看到这句话的动词出现了，叫做 be 动词 are， 然后才看到主词补语 scattered here。所以呢，我们应该要把它反过来，我们先用倒装句来切入重点，告诉读者说，顺化是散布着古代帝王陵寝，然后你后面再用关系子句慢慢的去对那个陵寝做补充说明。好，接着我们就看到中间那一句关系子句 ，of which perhaps the most beautiful is the Ming Mong tomb。这里呢，它是使用最高级搭配 of which 来表达先行词当中最怎么样的。像课文这个关系子句 ，which 就是指前面提到的古代帝王陵寝，然后用来表达说，在那些古代帝王陵寝当中，最美的或许就是明命陵。好，我们来造个例句哦。There are several night markets in the city, of which the most well-known is Shilin Night Market. 城市里面有好几个夜市，然后其中最有名的是士林夜市。那句子里面的 of which the most well-known 那个 which 呢，就是用来表达前面的夜市，然后用来表达说这当中里面最有名的。好，最后我们来看到以 whose 开头的关系子句。这个关系子句里面，这个 who 是当所有个关系代名词。那它的先行词呢，可以是人或是事物。who 就表示什么什么的，后面要接名词。像课文句子里面的 who 指的就是前面提到的 Ming Mong Tomb。
明命令，所以 whose 就表示明命令的。Whose complex includes palaces and temples? 表示明命令的建筑群包含了宫殿和寺庙。然后接着，它再以 palaces and temples 来当先行词，用 that 关系子句 that stand in perfect harmony with the natural surroundings 来形容那些宫殿寺庙，说明那些是和自然环境和谐并存的宫殿寺庙。哇，听完这段讲解，同学们真是谢谢你们耐心哦。我们终于讲完一个句子了，好，现在可以休息了。以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Isle, the tiny isle is too small to support any animal life, which is why bushes and trees are all you'll find on it. Perfume, many offices request that employees not wear perfume because some people are allergic to it. Harmony. The buildings were built in a variety of styles, with no consideration for the overall harmony of the town's architecture. Surroundings. Martin wasn't paying attention to his surroundings, so he got lost on his way back to his hotel. Flourish. Once the country became more stable, its economy began to flourish. Unique. Don't let the fear of standing out stop you from showing the world your unique side. I bet lots of people will go there too. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.